You sit down to focus on your most important task for the day, and within seven minutes, you find yourself scrolling through Facebook, email, YouTube, Instagram, and everything else that is vying for your attention. You try hard to turn off those distractions, and you finally get back to work. But another nine minutes later, you suddenly find yourself mindlessly scrolling through the latest news. Have you ever wondered how this takes place just so easily, almost automatically? Well, in this video, you will learn the three key ideas about habit formation and how you can make good habits and break bad habits. These ideas will transform your productivity. And these fundamentals of habit building are from the New York Times bestseller, Atomic Habits by James Clear. The ideas in this video are going to change your life. Okay, so let's start by understanding how habits exist in the first place and why it is so easy for us to get distracted from our work ever so often. The first big idea is the habit loop. There are certain mental cues which allow the development of our habits. These cues work in four distinct steps to constitute what's called the habit loop. First, you're working on something important and you're feeling a little bored. That is the cue. You suddenly have that urge for a new stimulation. That is your craving. As a response, you most likely go ahead and pick up your phone or open a new tab on your browser. And before you realize... You get into step four. You will either type up the name of your favorite website or open a social media app. And soon you are deep into that website or app because that's just how you quote unquote reward yourself with a novelty for the moment or an instant dopamine rush for your brain. It happens at a subconscious level. You don't even know and you're already there. And that is why we fail to realize how we easily get distracted while working. We're unable to focus on our important tasks at hand because we're captives in this self-created habit loop. But here's the good news. It is possible for you to redesign your habit loop for your own benefit. What you need to do is first analyze your current habits and identify the challenges of your bad habits. Next, work on bringing a change into that behavior. For this, you must make a conscious effort to break free from the habit loop. You have to either add new parts into the four components of building good habits or take away those parts that will make bad habits really hard to do. Now, if it is just about breaking bad habits by making them impossible to do and building good habits by making them inevitable, then why is it so challenging? Well, that's where the next idea comes in. Number two, the valley of disappointment. Turns out that every single person trying to make a change goes through something called the valley of disappointment. Whether you're trying to go to the gym, trying to build a meditation practice, building your business, as humans, we embark upon a new journey for self-improvement with the expectation that our results are going to grow in a linear manner. So we put in all our efforts and hope to see visible progress in terms of growth, improvement, or transformation. Now, this is where most of us get trapped. Or worse, with no visible outcome in sight, we often feel our efforts are just going to waste, and so we quit. But the truth is, the results don't actually grow in a linear manner. And that is why our expectations rarely match the reality. And any attempt to change our behavior becomes more and more challenging over time. The key understanding we need to have is that we must regard the initial phase as a valley, a stretch that we all have to struggle with at the beginning. But if we persist with our efforts, we will surely make it over to the top. Remember, progress is not linear. It does not steadily improve, but rather it compounds over time. The initial phase where we don't really see any difference is the time when the progress is compounding, but not very visible. Only if we hang on to it and continue, the results will appear, and then we will realize how astronomically huge they can get. Now let's get into the fundamentals of habit formation to build good habits and break the bad ones. That is idea number three. Idea number three is the four laws of habit formation. As per James Clear, there are four broad categories through which we can successfully make changes in our habits. We have to ensure that the act of changing the habits are easy, satisfying, obvious, and attractive. Now let's look at how we can implement these factors. Law number one, make it easy. Example, you want to go to the gym every morning. Start with tying your shoelaces and getting out of the house as soon as you wake up. Begin with something which will take you less than two minutes to do. The two-minute rule helps to break down the habit into one easy little step at a time. Next, add walking or driving to the gym or exercising for five minutes instead of an hour. Build upon your new habit and create your own system by incrementally increasing a small chunk of the change in behavior every single time. The idea is to make it easy for you to gradually shape your habit into your intended behavioral outcome. 
For example, maybe you want to stop compulsive browsing on the internet. Here, a commitment device will help you make an easy choice in the present and control your actions in the future. Try something like an outlet timer for the power plug, which can help to break your addiction of browsing the internet obsessively. This device literally times out and let's say at 10 p.m. and only started at 6 a.m. So during the time in between, your Wi-Fi shuts down, making it really easy for you to break your late night internet browsing marathon sessions. Now, you have no option but to relax, catch up on sleep or hang out with your family. Note, once in a while is not the way to create habits. You have to show up and do it again and again and again, even if you are doing very small things at a time. Repetition is the mother of change. It is more powerful than showing up every once in a while and trying to do more. Law number two is to make it satisfying. Example, if you're trying to become fitter in life and telling yourself, I'm going to go to the gym more often and lift more weights. But if you lack the passion to do just that, then you are not going to achieve the change you are seeking. Instead, try identifying activities that you would actually enjoy doing, like playing soccer, joining a workout program, swimming, things that you enjoy. This way, it will become more likely for you to achieve your goal and be satisfied with your effort in the process. Remember, the idea is to play your own game in order to cultivate good habits. And to do that, it is important to find out what is at the intersection of your talent, your strengths, and your passions. Once you identify that, trying to build good habits within that area will bring in a whole lot of excitement instead of struggle. Law number three is to make it obvious. Practice implementation intention. This is a scientifically backed strategy where you begin your habit building exercise with a formulated plan or a clear commitment. The idea is to declare what you want to do and when you want to do it very clearly. Example, during the next week, I will go to the gym downstairs at 5.30 a.m. every single day or on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, whatever it is for you. Just the act of declaring your intention aloud to yourself and especially to others or writing it down is going to improve your performance by over 2x. Another way to make it obvious is to optimize your environment. This is another obvious and effective way to encourage good habits and discourage bad ones. For example, throw away or lock up unhealthy food from your pantry or put the TV remote in the next room or lock it away or keep your phone six feet away while you're working or put it in another room. Another way to make change obvious is to leverage accountability. Now, let me share how this works with an example of a friend of mine. My friend Eric wanted to become a writer, but he was inconsistent with his writing. He was struggling to write every day. So here's what I proposed to him. I said, you're going to write at least 1,000 words per day, and you're going to send me a screenshot of your writing every day where I see those 1,000 words. And if you don't write 1,000 words a day, you will owe me $50 for the day, and you're going to do it for the next 30 days. As a result of this, for the entire period of those 30 days, I received a screenshot from him every single day, even if the screenshot came in at 11.59 p.m. He ensured that I got it, and he ended up writing at least 1,000 words a day every single day for 30 days. That's 30,000 words written. So anytime you're trying to build a habit, make use of external accountability. Tell them what you are doing or planning to do. That will work every single time, no matter what area you're trying to build your accountability. Law number four of habit formation is to change your associations. As Jim Rohn says, we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So in order to change your habits, you have to be selective of the company you keep. The people we surround ourselves with invariably affects every single area of our life. We tend to soak up their qualities. We subconsciously take in their behaviors, their attitudes, and we start living up to the expectations that they have set up for themselves. In fact, if you had the option of doing just one thing from everything I have shared with you in this video, this is the biggest change you can make. Change your associations. Being amongst like-minded people is guaranteed to make a big difference in any habit that you're trying to change. So if you want to put an end to being a part of the 99% of majority who are constantly distracted and frustrated and wavering in their focus every single day, and instead, if you want to become a part of that 1% of people who are supremely focused on what they want to achieve, you better find yourself a community of those 1% people who are doing great things, who are working hard, who are making things happen. Now, here's the best part. I may just have the tribe of those associates that you've been waiting for all along. Welcome to Focus Blocks. We have created Focus Blocks where you come and co-work with us in a live co-working setting designed for deep focus. And here is how it works. 
First of all, we begin by helping you identify your most important task that you need to focus on. Then we ask you to turn off all distractions. And as it is live room with a focus guide and everyone's camera is on, you turn off all distractions and notifications and work on your most important task for the next 50 minutes straight. And then we end that work session and we ask you to reflect on your progress and share it with the group. And then we take a break to meditate, to relax, recharge. And then we do this all over again. We do this every hour, 24 hours a day, Monday through Friday. At Focus Blocks, you get to co-work with an entire online community of highly focused individuals from around the world who are all there to not only get their most important work done, but also to achieve much bigger results in life. So go ahead, change your tribe and see your productivity soar, see your productivity grow exponentially. Get yourself a free seven-day trial of Focus Blocks by going to focusblocks.io or clicking on the link below or the link on this page here. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed and talk to you later.